When it comes to DaVinci Resolve, there are a few things that I feel like I can't make enough videos about or remind people about enough. Uh, things like the render cache. How long has it been since you cleared out your render cache? If you don't know, come up to playback, manage render cache, that'll pop up a UI, show you all your different projects and how much space the render cache files for those projects are taking up on your hard drive. You can get rid of those. But <laughs> in addition to the render cache, which I love talking about, um, another big one is the DaVinci Resolve reference manual. I've talked about the manual a few times, but in this video, I want to talk about something specific, um, a really cool resource in there that I haven't talked about before. Um, also, if you don't know, you can get the manual either by going to the website, uh, the support page for Blackmagic Design, or by coming over to help inside Resolve, clicking reference manual, and that will load it right up. And this did just get updated with the full release of DaVinci Resolve 19. So you, you are good to go there. And actually something you might notice is the total page size for this manual. One, it's very large, over 4,000 pages, but this version is actually slightly smaller than the last version. Um, I believe they moved some of the specific um, uh, content about some of like their, their like um, desktop controls to like a separate document. Um, so it's, it's not as much that like it was, it was pared down majorly. There's still over 4,000 pages of it, but it is a little smaller than before. Of course, at the top, you got a fun little note right from Grant Petty, which we always love to see. But I want to talk about one specific thing. When I was checking out this new manual, um, for the first time something caught my eye. I don't doubt this was probably there in previous versions, but um, I noticed on the table of contents all the way at the bottom is menu descriptions. The menus in Resolve can be wild. You know, there's all the different uh, pages and then menus that pop out into each other. Menus in any program can be intimidating. In Resolve, definitely intimidating. But if you click Menu Descriptions, it has its own mini table of contents that perfectly syncs up to all these major, you know, menu categories. And not only does this walk through each and every option underneath all those different menus. Not only does it have the page number if you want to get there manually, but these are also direct links. If I scroll to something like edit, delete gaps, you have the option in menu, but if you click that, it will take you right to this section in this manual to tell you your different options for how you want to delete gaps individually or, you know, um, auto selecting your gaps or making it a keyboard shortcut, all those different options. Of course, it's a great exercise if you're ever in Resolve to just open up those menus and go, you know, as slowly as you want to to make sure you understand things, especially in sections um, like, like editing or these clip settings. There are numerous different places in the Resolve UI where you can interact with something on your timeline, whether on the clip directly or, uh, you know, the overlayers in the viewer or in the inspector and all of these options, um, which of course are tied to keyboard shortcuts. And I know, especially for new users jumping into Resolve, um, you can get up and running pretty quickly, but it doesn't take much extra research um, to discover, you know, a much wider range of all the tools at your disposal when working with clips. Another, for instance, that I actually see people ask about all the time, say, uh, for instance, you've got some clips on a timeline, you're working away, and all of a sudden, you notice a weird gray bar over your timeline. Huh, what's that? You don't know. You can, you can't even like grab it. You can make it bigger or shorter. What's going on? If you don't know, this is the in and out points that you probably mistakenly set at some point. By default, there are I and O. Uh, there's also a keyboard shortcut out there somehow for just setting it to the clip you're working on. And you can always come up to uh, mark, clear in and out point. By default, the keyboard shortcut for that is Alt X as well. But if you wanted to learn more about that, you could come to mark, clear in and out points, click that and you'll find out a lot more about how to navigate in and out points and probably how you could actually use them more and their full functionality. Check this out. You can convert in and out points to a duration marker. That's pretty neat. If you want something that, you know, lasts longer that you won't accidentally get rid of, convert that into a marker. I didn't know you could do that, but you can. Neat. I don't doubt that there are some people like me who have probably been in Resolve for a while, but didn't know about this specific, you know, option or, you know, list <laughs> in the reference manual. Um, but like I said, especially if you're new to Resolve as well, um, uh, the reference manual can be overwhelming, but you know, you got the table of contents, but you've also got like this like inverse table of contents here right at the end of the manual. Um, so as you sort through your uh, menus inside Resolve, if you don't recognize something, boot up the reference manual and it will get you, it'll get you your answers. We love the reference manual here. Another great thing that they throw into this already 
free software, which is incredible. So I hope you think it's pretty neat too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.